Hello, everybody. Welcome to Basic Go. Today, I want to give a big thanks to Marina Joy, our very first patron supporter. And I just want to say thank you so much, Marina, for your support. And you will always be first in this channel. Today, we're going to study a play that appears more or less frequently in double digit Q games. It's called The Crane's Nest. And is this play right here, it appears when um, white has lost um, a great majority of liberties. It's always a row of three stones. And notice that white has lost not only these liberties, but also these two, these two sides. There is a saying that goes, honey at the head of two stones. But there is also a saying that says, honey at the head of three stones. So playing honey, a diagonal move here or here, at the head of uh, two or three stones is really powerful because it really reduces the liberties for those groups. Um, in this case, there is uh, honey in both sides. So yeah, white has lots most of um, her liberties. So let's see how this uh, looks with a more um, normal play. Uh, something like this, you know, this is kind of a mess. There are three white groups uh, in the board and three black groups. One, two, three for white and one, two, three for black. So this is, you know, this is difficult. Uh, black really, you know, wants to unite all his stones. Otherwise, there's going to be a big mess and a big fight. And this black group could be captured really easily. These ones, this two stone also. So in this case, the play is very simple. Now let's imagine uh, that, you know, black plays here, which is the most obvious play, right? right? You want to capture, you want to reduce white liberties. So these are the key stones, by the way. These stones are the ones that, if captured, would unite all of uh, Black's groups. Now, this stone wouldn't do that. This stone would unite these two groups, uh, but not the three of them. The same with this one. So these stones are, are very important. So the most important, the most common play you would could think about would be this one. In this case, it doesn't really work because uh, white can attack here. And, um, you know, if black extends, um, white could just escape like this, right? And this doesn't really work. Uh, because white can attack here again, right? And attack here again, and skip, right? So um, that doesn't work, right? So let's see what will happen if when black plays here, um, white plays attack, and again, and then black plays here. This is common, uh, common play, because white's in attack, white has to capture. Black uh, uses that short shortage of liberties here, but in this case, it doesn't really work because black is it's without a play. Black blocks here, then white captures these stones, so it doesn't really work. And in the other at the other side also it doesn't work. Black can attack first, and then do something like this, and yeah, this is gonna be capture or even here. It's probably better here. Um, so yeah, that's not gonna work. Um, so there is one play that solves all these problems, and it's called the uh, crane's nest. Which play is it? It's this play. Many uh, double digit Q players, you know, wait until, because they say, oh, it doesn't matter. Even with another play, I can save my stones. So at this moment, these three stones are captured, and all these three groups are united. Uh, white may say, oh, I can still jump here. But it, that doesn't really work because the play is really a wedge. It's called uh, the suji, called a wedge. You wedge inside uh, these two stones, and there's nothing white can do to escape. Let's see how it works. Um, white can attack here or here. It's exactly the same. White would attack here. And the important thing is not to connect with this stone because then white would escape. But instead of that, black would uh, play here and and play, uh, play an Atari on white stones, use that shortage of liberties. So white has to capture necessarily. 
and then black plays here again, and it's another Atari. So if black connects, if white connects, sorry, black captures. So that doesn't work. And if you know white realizes she's going to get captured and she extends here, well, black just simply captures here. The same happens if um, white were to play here is exactly the same. It's a symmetrical position. You Atari here first. Um, you know, you white is, is forced to capture. Then you Atari again, and this is it. All these groups are connected, and this is a disaster for white. Now, you would think this play doesn't appear very often, but it actually appears very often in double digit Q uh, games because there is a tendency when we're weaker to not protect the liberties of our groups. So this thing to happen quite often. Um, I remember actually being a 5Q in KGS and someone falling, my opponent, a 5Q also, falling for a crane's nest. So even though you would think this doesn't appear in games, even at, at single-digit Q, uh, games still appears and people still fall for it. So how do you spot it? Well, very easy. When you are starting to play and you see that your opponent has a three stones, a row of three stones, and you get to Hane in both sides, the crane's nest is about to appear. Okay, I hope you remember this. See you next time.